Welcome to the Initiative's channel. We are joined today by Matt Burgess, research fellow here at the Initiative and the author of Switched On, a report that we recently published looking into New Zealand's energy policy. Welcome, Matt. Hi. Now, it's been five weeks since the Interim Climate Change Committee released its report to the government, but the public hasn't seen it yet. Where are we at? So we just had budget, uh, so the government's response is imminent. I think they said they were going to take two weeks at the time to prepare their response. Uh, just a bit of background, the interim committee came out of the coalition agreement between Labour and the Greens. In that agreement there was a commitment to 100% renewable electricity by 2035, that's what the Switched On report was about uh, that we published a couple of months ago. Uh, and that agreement also included a commitment to set up a climate change commission. Uh, the legislation that will enable it, that was uh, introduced to the House about two weeks ago. So that's on track and that'll be underway probably next year. In the interim, uh, the government decided it wanted to set up a committee to prepare advice for the incoming commission. And one of the things the government asked was for the committee to advise on how to implement this 100% renewables policy. So the committee's worked for about a year. It started its work in April 2018. It delivered its report at the end of April 2019. And so now we're waiting to hear what the government has to say. Now, you have been very critical of the 100% renewable target in your own report, but do we know anything about what the ICCC might say about it? So, reports that... Uh, came, the, the chair of the committee gave a presentation at a conference, I think in April, about mid-April, and media reports from that presentation suggest that the committee's advice to the government on the 100% renewables policy will not be kind. It sounds like they have gone away and done a lot of modelling, they found much higher power prices for only limited emissions gains um, and the policy could also have consequences for security of supply and that sort of thing. Look, if that's indeed what the committee uh, has said, that's going to put the government in a tough spot. In the end, this is their own expert committee. It is a genuinely well-credentialed committee. It's gone away and it's come back uh, with a pretty damning bit of advice. That'll be interesting to see what the government does in response. So as you said, it's obviously not what the government really wanted to hear from the committee, but how is the government now going to respond to that? Well, this is the big question. So it's worth keeping in mind that governments, it's not common for governments to be willing to allow their emissions or environmental policies to be tested for their effectiveness. In this case, in fact, the government didn't even ask the committee to go and test the policy, but the committee suspected that the policy might be counterproductive, and here's why. If you try to reduce emissions in electricity, um, you might succeed, but electricity in New Zealand is already clean. And if what you're doing as part of that uh, reduction is putting up the price of electricity, you're potentially going to forego much greater emissions reductions elsewhere in the economy from sectors that switch off coal and gas or fossil fuels onto electricity. It's called electrification. And the big two sectors are transport and uh, industrial heating processes, which together put out far more emissions than electricity. So the committee suspected that this policy might actually prevent far greater emissions reduction, and they wanted to test that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they found, but it's possible that the committee is going to say that this policy uh, will actually raise emissions and make it harder to achieve our emissions targets. So. Um, one thing we have, look, we don't really know what the government's going to say. It will be tough for the government to ignore the committee. But one thing we do know is uh, that the Prime Minister was on the radio about a month ago, and she seemed to be warming the ground for stepping away from the policy. And look, let's be clear, if this is a policy that makes it harder to get to our emissions targets and makes it, uh, puts up the price of electricity, it's a win for the environment. If the government does step away, it's a win for Kiwi households, and the government should be congratulated for having the courage to um, back off a policy which it turns out uh, isn't very good. It means it can go and try other things that are more effective. Okay, so you think there is a, a reason for optimism that we should congratulate the government, but we definitely have to congratulate the committee as well. Is that something as a process that could be replicated for other policy areas? Yeah, so look, the government didn't ask for testing, but they got it. And what the committee's done is demonstrate that policy, emissions policies can be tested. It's not something governments do, but when you look at research uh, from around the world, um, the few policies that are tested, it reveals a very wide variation in the performance of different policies. So, what, what other policies would you like to see tested? Well, all emissions policies, because actually one of the things I think we're going to find is that unless you test a policy, it's really hard to know how effective it is. Um, we have an electric vehicles policy in New Zealand. Now, look, nothing wrong with electric vehicles. They're a fantastic technology. Um, but overseas studies um, tend to find it's quite an expensive way to reduce emissions. $1,000 a tonne or more 
when there are much cheaper ways or much more effective ways to reduce emissions. So we should be trying to find what works best and do those first before we get to these very high cost policies. So the committee has shown you can test policies and you can do it fairly quickly. At the moment we're not testing our policies. We have no idea how many tonnes of carbon or how many dollars we spent to get that reduction uh, through this electric vehicle testing, for example. That's what ECA has just told us. We should be testing everything because we can double or triple our um, efforts, uh, the effects of our efforts, if we just check which policies are working and which ones aren't, and just do the, the top 50%. Well, thanks, Matt, for this update. Um, we'll expect um, this report from the RCCC and the government's response to it anytime soon, and um, we'll probably talk about it again then. Thank Indeed. you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much for watching.